Welcome Hornets and thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to be working with the sum to product and product to sum formulas. Let's just take a look at them. Now be aware, I have two groups because I noticed that uh, the book, for whatever reason, decided to give you a one half as opposed to the two. So when I see a two cosine alpha cosine beta, I immediately put it into the cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha plus beta. And I look for the pattern of the cosine and cosine. If there's a two in front, I'm good. If there isn't, I make sure that I divide both sides by two, which is where the formula comes out for them. Now keep in mind that things can change and as we manipulate things, we may end up having different coefficients besides one half or the two on this side. We could have things like a third or sixths or something else. And the more we get into the trig, the more difficult they will become. So please be aware the book gives you these and all they've done is taken my formula, which is what I work with, and then they just divided both sides by two. Now the book has also given you a separate set of formulas and they say that these are their sum to product. And you'll notice these are the formulas they give you. I will point out that when I work with mine, I like to go here and work with these and create a system of equations to find my alpha. Once I find my alpha, I then plug it back in and I find my beta. And that's how I worked with it. Once again, I can only go from based upon what I have had my exposure and experience to. And it's not to say that this method won't work, after all, if you know what alpha and beta are, you can plug them in and then just divide by two. Okay, so let's see an example and see which way you like best. So let's take cosine of 38 degrees and we're going to add the cosine of 106 degrees. Now for me, I would look at this and I would say that the formula that I am working with, with a cosine cosine, is going to be giving me a 2 cosine of alpha minus beta plus the cosine of alpha plus beta. Now once I have that, I know that alpha plus beta is 106. And I know that alpha minus beta is going to be 38. I end up adding, using linear combination, the two betas cancel and I have two alpha, and I'm left with 144. Dividing both sides by two, I find that my alpha is 72 degrees. I can then go back and say, well, if alpha is 72 degrees plus beta, equaling 106, I can subtract 72 degrees from both sides. You'll notice I end up getting beta equals 34 degrees. I then know that my formula would be 2 cosine of alpha minus beta, and that would be my, let's see, that should be a product in between. That's a product right there, excuse me as I correct that. And now I would go ahead and I would say, well, all right, I've got a cosine of 78 degrees. That has to be the sum, and the difference is 34. So 2 cosine of 34 degrees, cosine of 72 degrees. And that would be the answer that I would get. And keep in mind, commutative property multiplication would allow me to rewrite it as 2 cosine of 72 degrees, cosine of 34 degrees. And it's up to you which one you have. Now, if you were to use the other formula, let's just go ahead and find our cosine alpha cosine beta. I would put 2 cosine, and I would now add the two together. 38 plus 106 divided by 2. Notice it takes you directly to the 72 degrees. Then I would have the cosine and I would put in alpha minus beta, and therefore I would have my 38 minus 106 degrees. 
Now we have to be careful here because we are going to end up with a negative result. And when we do, we end up having our, uh, what, 68. So we'd have cosine of 68 divided by 2, which is also 34, but now it's a negative. We do have our even odd identity that says the cosine of a negative theta is equal to the cosine of theta. And I would have to utilize that formula here to simply finish it up by saying the cosine of 72 degrees, cosine of 34 degrees. Now, either way you do it, you're going to have to stop and think about it for a little bit. Some people find this to be the easier method, and therefore this group of formulas would be the ones they want to use. Once again, it's up to you. I'm just trying to show you multiple ways to do this problem so that you do not have to stress. Now, what will I give you? I will probably give you all of these formulas and let you decide which ones you want to utilize. So do you want to use one of these up here, or do you want to use this up down here as you go in your backward, uh, backward from uh, the, pro the sum into the product? Okay, once again, we have some difference going into a product as opposed to having a product going into a sum or difference. And you do have choices, and that's important to remember. All right? Just because I'm using one or two doesn't mean that you can't use something else. And identities um, give us the opportunity to manipulate the formulas in many different ways. All right? So please do not stress too much there. Let's take another one. Let's say we have the sign of 50 degrees cosine of 20 degrees. And we want to change this into a sum or difference. I notice that I have a sine cosine. So here's my sine cosine. Now notice they have a 2 in the problem that I am working with. And because there is a 2, I'm going to want to make sure that I utilize this formula right here. So I then have sine of alpha plus beta, and then I have a plus sine alpha minus beta. Now watch out, because if we end up getting a negative with our sine, we have the even-odd identity that says that the sine of theta is the negative sine of theta. Okay? So here we would put them together and add them. We would get the sine of 70 degrees, and then add the sine of of 30 degrees when we subtract. There's our answer. Once again, nothing outrageous, nothing to worry about, and we just have to be careful. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. This time, let's do one that doesn't have it as quite, quite as convenient for us. So let's say we have a cosine of 40 degrees, cosine of 10 degrees. Notice this does not have a 2 in front, and as a result, I would be dividing both sides by 1 half using my method. And for those of you who wish to use the formulas in the book, we would be using this process right here. And therefore, we would have 1 half our cosine of the difference, alpha minus beta, and then plus the cosine of the alpha plus beta. I would then have one half, and when I subtract them, I'm going to get the cosine of 30 degrees plus the cosine of 50 degrees. And there is my answer. Once again, we just adapt. Whatever we need to do, we're going to have to just apply the formulas as we see them. Okay? Hopefully, this is helping you. Let's take something that's going to be even more difficult. Now, this isn't one that I gave my students, but I think it's quite reasonable. What happens if we have a 3 cosine of 30 degrees sine of 10 degrees? Notice that we're looking at 3 cosine 30 degrees sine 30 degrees. And once again, there is no 2 in front. Therefore, I would be looking at one, uh, the 3 times, and I have 1 half, 
And we're now going to locate the formula that has cosine and sine on it. Cosine sine uh, would be right here. Except it doesn't have the 2, which is why I put the 1 half in front. And now I have sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta. Sine of alpha plus beta is going to be 40 degrees. Then we have our plus. Now let's see, that would be uh, cosine minus. So minus sine of alpha minus beta, and that would give me a 20 degrees. This now gives me three halves. When I simplify it, sine of 40 degrees minus the sine of 20 degrees. Now keep in mind that the sum and difference formulas are always being used, or the product to sum, sum to product. Um, and this usually happens when we work with power reduction formulas. So be aware, when I go over the power reduction formulas for you tomorrow, you're going to see that we will utilize them in our work. It's just something we have to watch out for. And we look for it when we have things like the cosine of, let's say, um, a 2 theta times the cosine of a 4 theta. Okay? Once again, no 2. So we would have a 1 half. We would then look at the appropriate formula. This would give me the cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. And so I would have the cosine of alpha minus beta. That's 2 theta minus 4 theta is minus 2 theta. Notice that even odd identity coming out. Then we have the plus. And then we add them together and we have the cosine of 6 theta. When we finish, we're looking at 1 half cosine of 2 theta plus 1 half the cosine of 6 theta. And this is what we would end up working with when we have our power reduction formula. So once again, be aware that the product to sum, sum to product, just like the uh, sum, of, uh, sum of angles for a sine or the difference of angles for a sine, cosine, and tangents, double angle formulas, half angle formulas are always being used. Okay? All righty, Hornets. That's what we're working with. I hope this has helped you. And if it has, please remember to click like. As we continue, we will see our answers tomorrow, and our answers are also posted. If you have any questions, please remember to put them down, and you can uh, ask me questions, and I'll do my best to answer them, either in class or in a video. Thank you very much, Hornets. Take care and be well. Bye-bye now.